Hello, everybody. Sorry, I was just getting myself sorted. Do you want that? Right, hang on. Let's get Charlie over. Johnny Goss. Charlie's sweet baby. Here he is. Right. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Thank you so much for joining me for another chaotic live stream where all of our training goes out the window and um, there's just noise and treats and crimsons <laughs> and all the good stuff. Um, it's really lovely to see all of you guys here and we're glad that you can make it and if you're watching this back thank you for watching it back. The usual thank you so much to our wonderful YouTube channel members and Patreon members for joining us as well. Special shout out for you guys. Um, it does feel like it's been a long time since my last live stream. Um, so yeah I'm excited to see what chaos is going to happen today? David is here helping me today, which obviously makes life lots easier. Um, and of course, we're going to get birdies out, starting as always with Olive and Charlie, um, who loves all of you. Uh, and he's having his little treats jaw, so he's behaving for now. I know he's a char. He's a good baby. He's a very good boy. He's <laughs> always oh, talking all day long. It's so funny. Um, um, oh, do you know what? I need to get I Love You on cue. It's one of the things that I'm um, trying to do is get him to say I Love You on cue. We haven't quite got it yet, but hopefully while he's out, if he, yeah, baby, baby, if he wants to behave himself, we'll see if we can get him to say I Love You because um, it's always adorable. Uh, see you all filtering in. There's, there's so many people and hello, everybody, <laughs> everybody who's joining us. Um, yes, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm really excited to... Um, do this live stream today and as always if anybody has any questions at all for me about anything do drop them in the chat and we will get to you uh, i've got a few kind of bits and pieces updates on how things are going over at bird nerd hq but as always we love a q a so if you've got any questions do let me know louis is of course going to start the scrum song because he's a naughty boy well in bonding well, well, I presume next thing would be like targeting, stepping up. Yeah, targeting, Ooh. stepping up training. <laughs> Introducing target training. Louis clearly got a lot of thoughts on this. Um, but eating from the hand is always a good sign. Uh, looking for that top tier treat as well. Uh, but targeting through the bars is always a good place to start, um, to start establishing that process of your bond. Are we going to have to do some bribery with him already? You know it made it worse last time when I did it. It's my life. That's it's very true. the noisier. I mean, he's pretty noisy already. I hope you guys can hear me, but Louis, it's like his thing. He knows when I start <laughs> doing the live streams or when David's doing it, it's time to scrim. So hopefully he'll pipe down a little bit. Yeah, and, uh... the whole afternoon until just For now. some reason, I mean, whenever we try and film, they're always noisy because they get excited. And of course, they have trained us to give them treats because we're just trying to just trying to have quiet. But um, that's why I say the training always goes out the window when we do the live streams because we're just trying to... <laughs> Make sure there's not too much chaos, and yet there always is. Uh, but yeah, Charlie's a very good boy. Uh, Olive's having a little straw there, and then we'll see who we're going to get out later, maybe chipping fish or something like that. Um, I try not to get Lou and Kip out too much. They did come out for the Christmas special, um, but they do put me on edge when they come out because Kipling is a menace for ripping up keys off keyboards and all that kind of stuff. He's a cheeky boy. So, um, yeah, always, always good fun. Um, so what have we been up to, Charlie Bear? So David and I have uh, become professional members of the International Association for Avian Trainers and Educators, <laughs> a bit of a mouthful, the IAATE. Um, we wanted to do that for a really long time, just haven't got around to it. Um, and... Right, <laughs> well, I think we've got to Yeah, we'll give, we'll give Lewis some bribery. And I'll tell you about... Oh, okay, well, we're seeing Charlie's backside. <laughs> Charlie's, well, you yours, you Charlie's like, I want another straw, please. You got your straw. <laughs> you got your straw. You sit next to me and eat it. Charlie it does. It right, come on. Come on, little man. You just dropped his straw. Where are you? You dropped your straw. He wants another straw because we're going to keep everybody quiet. Yeah? Because Olive wants another one. Everybody knows we love the, the paper treat shots. Anyway, so yeah, we've become professional members of the IAATE and we are considering actually doing our certification to be official like professional bird trainers you have to do a whole exam it costs a couple of hundred quid um and you have to have like letters after your name because you know you pass the exam so we, again we've been thinking about doing that for such a long time probably um yeah so we've been thinking about doing this for some time we may do it we'll see um it's funny with things like that because 
we obviously know our stuff, studied it for years, but when you're in like exam mode, everything just escapes my head and I'm like, what am I doing? So um, yeah, we'll see about that. We'll let you know. <laughs> we pass, we'll let you know. Um, Louis is such a naughty boy. So Louis today. Right, anyway, as a char, <laughs> as I was saying, um, Louis today has had a lovely morning. He's gone into my sock drawer in the bedroom and he's thrown all of my socks on the floor. It's great fun. Um, we do make it into a bit of a game and make a big song and dance out of it because he thinks it's hilarious. When Kipling does it and throws socks out, he goes, ah, ah, ah. Um, so <laughs> we make um, a big fuss out of that because it's quite amusing for them to just kind of make a big mess. And then I get to play the game of picking them all up and putting them away again, which, you know, is always good fun. Um, what else have we got on our little list here? Uh, Kipling is obsessed with all of our invertebrate pets. Um, he, for some reason, they're fascinating. So we do joke that all of the bugs belong to him now. They're his pets. He's the zookeeper. Um, he goes and checks on them every day and says hello and, and goes Wah! at them. That's his little noise when he's curious. So that's quite funny that he's so interested in his bugs. Um, have we got any questions yet before I just ramble for ages? Yeah. Um... One, I don't think we're qualified to answer from sport about an annual wellness exam and someone being quoted for anaesthesia. I don't know why they would do that, but it's not really our place to comment on that, I don't think. In, in what sense? Where is it? Let me find out. Well, I don't know. We, we don't do the vet questions because we're not there. So. Um, so it depends. If you're having an annual wellness exam and you want blood done or anything more invasive, then they would probably have to put your bird under anaesthetic. Um to minimise stress and things like that and to be able to do things. But obviously, uh, bird going under anaesthetic is a very risky thing to do in the first place. So I think it's better to just contact your vet and ask them what they're actually kind of doing that. Yeah. Um, any other questions before I... Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. No? Okay. Mostly people are just commenting, yeah. commenting about, you know, um, Charlie of his dick. <laughs> He's so about funny. About exam, you know, exam jitters. Yeah. yeah no, no real... I mean, what's in the, oh, sorry, Kirsten's asking, what's in the foraging tray with grass stuff? So that, it's not sea grass, by the way, we wish it was. This is just crinkle paper. Um, last Easter, I bought loads of crinkle, yeah, I did. I bought loads of crinkle paper. Can you come in? Can you come in? Yeah. Loads of crinkle paper um, at Easter, and I still have some left over. So we use it in the base of the um, tray there, and then we use easy chicken, things like that. There's a question from uh, Fakira Khan. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. How do I get my budgie to like me? My budgie to like me. That's a, a, um, a whole experience, and I have a video on how to get a bird to trust you, which is the first step. What do you want, Char? Do you want... Don't steal her snacks. Charlie, Charlie, <laughs> you cheeky monkey, did he steal your snacks? Can you put one in? Yeah, love Charlie, you. Charlie, Charlie, good boy. Say, love you, my baby. Love do you, wanna... Charlie. Say, love you. Yeah, so I have a, a video on how to get your bird to trust you, and that's a really good place to start. Um, and it talks about target training and things like you are covering me in Nutri Berries. <laughs> it, um, it talks all about passive bonding, target training, uh, and the basics there. So that's a good place to start. Thank you very much, Casey Emporia. Uh, I love the little dancing. It is a sheep, isn't it? A little Shiba Inu dancing. I love that. <laughs> it's very cute. Thank you very much for your generosity. It's very, very kind of you. Um, more people are filtering in. Hi, guys. Don't worry about being late. <laughs> Come on in. Um, we're just chatting about what we've been up to and things like that. And the cheeky birdies. What's wrong, sweet What does she need? Does she need more snacks? I've got I've got a sneaky stash of um, Nutri Berries in my pocket, oh. which are very much a treat food for our birds. Um, but we do lots of high-value treat foods. <laughs> yeah, go, Charlie. Yes. For live streams, because we want quite early. Oh no, I've run out now. Dirty bird. My last one. They're not like overly filled with treats, by the way, guys. I just, we made some up earlier just to make sure that we have some quiet. Um, God, Charlie, you're getting spoiled today. All I spoiled. mean, he deserves it. You know, he's perfect. He deserves all of the treats. <laughs> um, cool. Right. Where were we with all of the bits and bobs? So, chip and fish with them, we've been kind of doing just some. Going back to general basics as well, just uh, reinforcing for stepping up, doing lots of recall and things like that, and just really kind of solidifying the basics because it's very easy. And I'll talk about that a little bit later if there's any kind of quiet time. But sometimes you forget to 
reinforce the basics. Um, but they they just love their training. <laughs> the greedy little monsters. Fish um, did get a little bit overweight at one point because Chip is like always flying around and stuff, and Fish is more. He likes to walk places and he likes to be ferried about. So um, we've been working on just. Uh, making sure his weight is where we want it to be, um, on a little bit of a diet and more exercise plan, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, we have. Yeah, cool. Um, Adara, thank you very much for your generosity and the, the dancing lemon. It was all the dancing ones. Is it because you guys do, do I need to dance in this live stream? No, no. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your generosity. It's very, very sweet of you, and um, we appreciate you. The Holly asks, hi, Brian. My question, my bird loves me, sets up perfectly and doesn't let me leave her site. She won't let me uh, touch it. Um, David actually has a really good video on that, if you can hear me, <laughs> um, called How to Pet and Cuddle Your Bird, and it talks about how to use contact training to train your bird to want to be petted, and it uses, you know, the process of kind of desensitization and negative reinforcement to get your bird used to your hand coming closer, uh, and taking it away when they're calm and over time you get closer and closer you can pair it with tasty yummy treats which charlie knows all about um to yeah the baby, baby bird, bird. <laughs> to um encourage kind of positive experiences and making sure you're not kind of pushing it to the point where your bird's like get away from me you yeah I, yeah i know you want to get just to that point where your bird is looking at your hand thinking what is that hand doing there you chill out you take it away and also you can pair the hand coming towards them with lots of good things or even better you can encourage your bird to come to you David did some really great training with Kipling at the moment I was going to say I was going to mention if you didn't cover it yeah, yeah um <laughs> called head which is a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> weird one to call it but essentially he presents his finger and Kipling chooses to come up and approach his finger kind of like a target uh, but he comes to David rather than David bringing his finger down to him and that's quite an empowering tool um having that choice to come and approach and touch and also, in turn, it can um, allow birds to, when they're uh, presented with fingers, instead of perhaps nibbling or doing any other undesirable behaviours, it can actually promote more just touching gently because that uh, positive experience has happened quite a lot. Yeah, I know. I love you. I love you. Baby bird. I love you. Birdie bird. Where are you going? You going for some snacks? Just check it out for a moment. <laughs> He doesn't want to say I love you today. So it's always what we want him to do something, but we'll get it on cue one day, I'm sure. Um, any other questions for me? No, that would be lovely. Just, um, yeah, yeah, so don't be afraid to show your questions. We will get to them as I kind of talk about various bits and bobs. We can talk about all things parrot or anything else that you'd like to know. Um, Anna did have a question. I'm not sure if Anna's still here. I think she said she couldn't make it. Um, and she was asking, uh, would we ever get canaries? Um, obviously not a parrot species, but still a very common pet bird species. And um, we'd love canaries. I think canaries are really, Louie, <laughs> are really underrated um, as a species. If you can hear me, I mean, so naughty. <laughs> um, canaries are very underrated as a species. They're very cool. They do produce nice sounds, unlike Louie's. Wait, 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 wait. Um, so yeah, we'd love some canaries, maybe some rescue canaries in the future in a nice aviary in our dream world where we have a sanctuary. It may never world, happen, <laughs> may never happen money, in the yeah. current recession in the UK. Um, no, it's, yeah, I think they're really cool. So yeah, canaries are awesome. Um, have you found my new canary? Do you want to come and say hello? Do you want to come with a mama? No. Okay, right, so where, <laughs> where were we? Um, Oh my goodness, these birds. It's always, it's so hard to concentrate. Can you guys hear them as loud as I can hear them? That's what I want to know. Um, are canaries and finches related? Generally speaking, they are within the kind of group of passerines, which are like songbirds, but they're not like mega closely related, but they're, they're quite similar. Um, yes, that is, that's just Louis. People are just getting annoyed by it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think everybody's probably getting annoyed. And Louis doesn't do this all day. Louis barely does. This. No, he, he basically he probably just turns these guys out. Yeah. Not out, and he's sort of fussy about it. And I think I'm going to pop Olive and Charlie away because I don't want Charlie going to pester pickles because we have a whole crazy dynamic of birdie relationships. So I'm going to put Olive and Charlie back, um, and then we'll get somebody else. Like, Do you want to come here? Not you, Louis. You naughty man. No, not Louis. Can you say love you, everybody? Can you, can you love you? Can you wave? Can you wave? Yeah, he's a good boy. Say love you. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> right, come on, sweet pea. 
Okay, we're well, okay. All right. So you're going to see that we've got a treat first. Where have I put them? Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, right. So let's get Charlie. Can you come in? Oh, he's such a good boy. And then we get kiss kiss. Okay, Charlie's come back out again. <laughs> oh dear. Can you come in here? Anyway, so what we were saying <laughs> is Lou the naughty boy. Charlie's decided we're only going in for pine nuts. We have to do the proper routine, Mama. Yeah, he has his routine. He really doesn't, he doesn't like it being changed much. <laughs> well, especially not on camera anyway. Although he's really good going in with me with the perch. Like he'll just go in and he'll be happy yeah. just waiting for me. He's a very good boy, but he um he's very good at get, getting maximum snacks. That's definitely one of his um <laughs> His defying qualities. So we'll get chip and fish out in a moment. Um, but yes, apologies for the noise. It is part of the live stream. It's kind of what you guys sign up for. I mean, <laughs> it's one of those things. Do you want to maybe give Louis some targeting while I'm trying to yeah, talk yeah. to people? <laughs> you can have a training session instead. Um, so, right, let's talk about what's actually going on on the channel. <laughs> we have a little bit of silence. Um, so I actually have a couple of really exciting collabs coming up with some very well-known and prominent people in the bird community. It's something that I'd like to do a little bit more of this year. He's doing some more collabs yeah, and stuff um, because I think that we can learn a lot, especially from people with extensive experience and people that I admire. I'm really excited for two guests who've been confirmed so far. And we'll probably get, you know, Dr. Jason Crean, our good friend, avian nutrition expert back on the channel. You know, he's always he's always knocking about, so I'm sure we'll get him back on. But we do have um, some other people lined up um, to come on the channel, and I'm really excited about that. But as I said before, if um, there is anybody you would like to see on my channel that you think aligns with our values, <laughs> um, do let me know um, who you would like to see on the channel and I'll see okay. what I can make work. Okay. Obviously, I can't make any promises because people have the right to say no. I mean, most of these people have no idea who I am. <laughs> I'm fairly insignificant. Um, but it's, you know, it's just really fun to be able to learn from other people. You know, anytime we talk to these people with just such a wealth of knowledge, it's, it's just my brain is just bursting with ideas. Um, that clearly we cannot implement during the live stream because <laughs> they're so naughty. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to do a few more collabs. It's obviously not going to be the main thing on my channel. And if you like collabs, um, my friend Sandra from um, Poodles and Parrots, she has the Parrot podcast. She does um, some really great collabs with um, different people and things like that I've been on there like four times now so if you like that kind of thing uh, you can search the parrot podcast or poodles and parrots and you can see the stuff on there because that's really fun David is not doing his job he's too busy doing emails to help me with the yeah, live chat uh, like yeah I'd like you to talk to the live chat please to help you with any questions and then you yeah, can hear my, my work. because you're helping me uh... <laughs> That's just Louis. Soundtrack and live stream is always a soundtrack and live stream, less size. All right, so Rishi has a question. Hello, I got a pineapple conya a week ago. He's friendly, but he's pretty skittish with me at times. Any tips on how to build trust? I let him be, I let him do things at his own pace. That's a great place to start. Yeah, really great place to start, respecting his body language. And a week is no time at all. Uh, one of the things I stressed in my How to Get Your Bird to Trust You video is... Um, there's no sort of right amount of time that you should spend on each step and, and that kind of thing because again even if you get a bird from a breeder and they say they're silly tame and that kind of thing that doesn't mean that they know who you are you know you're obviously a very awesome human being but your bird doesn't know that yet because he doesn't know you because we're all seen as different humans to birds you know they can differentiate between different people so he doesn't know you yet or he or she uh they or them doesn't know you yet uh, and they need to get to know you so i keep recommending this video in my live stream um but go and check out on my channel i think it's i think it's my like pinned video on my channel which is how to get your bird to trust you and work from there because uh, it has a, a lot of really awesome points if i do so say myself on how to kind of build up that relationship so um that's a good place to start but again a week is no time at all um, so there's a, a good grounding there for you to um, go on and kind of start your bonding journey. And David's still doing emails, so I'm going to do some more of my... Yeah, so is this. I'm going to do some more of my updates then. Unless there are any other questions. Uh, no. 
question. Are you sure? Because I think I saw the one from Stacey. Stacey, is it normal for a multi bird to sleep more than usual or have they just finished a big mole? Yeah, it's pretty normal. Yeah, um, especially with Chip. He like freaked us out um, a couple of years ago, I think it was, when he was having like a really harsh molt and he was so tired all the time. And we were like, what is going on? But he was molting really heavily. So, yes, it is normal. Obviously, it's always good to be aware of that and be very mindful of it. And if you think that there is anything wrong, then a checkup is uh, always a good idea. But obviously, molting is a very um, strenuous process in the body. Even though it's natural, it's very strenuous. So, um, again, I've got a video on molting um, with some of our tips and stuff like that, making sure you're supporting them nutritionally um, and offering bathing where possible. And if they don't like bathing, training them to enjoy bathing in a really positive thing. Um, so yes, definitely worth um, being mindful that birds can be more tired. Uh, they may even eat more, they may eat less, uh, they may be more grumpy because it's uncomfortable when those pinnies are coming in. Um, but all of those things are normal as long as everything is normal in the environment and that kind of thing as well. <clears throat> Um, so I'm going to get Chip and Fish out in a second. I'm just going to go through some other things while David's still doing emails and then I'll... Um... One email. <laughs> yeah, and this is a long email. Um, where are we? So we've done Chip and Fish, we've done Lou and Kip. Um, with Charlie, we're doing a lot more structured bonding training with him and like Lou and Kipling and Pickles and Scampi because Charlie's a really social bird who really wants to engage and interact with the other Conyers. The problem is we have a really kind of weird dynamic with all of our Conyers. Um, Scampy likes Charlie. Scampy doesn't like Olive. Charlie likes Scampy. Uh, Olive doesn't really like Scampy, but she'll kind of tolerate it at a distance. Um, Pickles hates everybody apart from Scampy, <laughs> but uh, Charlie wants to interact with Pickles. Uh, Charlie wants to interact with Kipling, but Kipling doesn't want to interact with Charlie. Charlie loves Louis. Louis loves Charlie. Louis hates Olive. <laughs> it's just, and the cockatiels are just there uh, watching from the sidelines like, oh my goodness, what is going on? So um, we've been doing a lot of active bonding work um, in protective contact to actually work through um, this sort of thing, because obviously we don't want anybody getting hurt. So even today, um, Charlie and Pickles, normally from a distance, um, you know, she'd be flinging herself at the bars, freaking out, trying to get to him. Today, I had them at the bars like this close, and they were just preening and going, uh, 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 when they did, <laughs> when Connie was preening, they're happy. So that was really awesome. Um, so that's one of the things that we're working with Charlie. I just wanted to uh, pause for a second to say thank you very much um, to Scott94 for your very uh, generous uh, donation there, with the little. Um, Cute little, oh, I can actually like this one. It's actually letting me like it. Why is it so strange that it only lets you do certain? I've liked it now. Um, I would like everybody's, but for some reason, YouTube doesn't let me like every single one, but I do like every single one. <laughs> that makes sense. Thank you very much for your generosity. Any questions for me? Yeah, some questions. Mm -hmm. um, Stacey, was it Stacey? Someone, oh, I think it was Stacey. No, Kirsten asked, when do you know when uh, birds finish molting? Gina basically responded, when the feather cases are done, then the feathers are all in, yeah. basically. You can drag on though sometimes, sometimes you have some pin feathers yeah. mostly when they're done. But that's about it. Another question from Alicia, I've recently started switching my three cockatiels to chop in the morning, but one is still refusing to eat with a bit of seed sprinkle. Is it okay for them to have chop and seed? Yes and no. I'd be looking at, instead of doing seed, ideally kind of transitioning onto soaked and or sprouted seeds, grains and legumes, because they're similar but healthier. Uh, David did a recent video on soaking for birds, which is a great place to start if you're a bit nervous about sprouting. Um, yes, please. However, um, if you're offering too much kind of seed mixed in with a the chop, then they're more likely to pick it out. But obviously we don't want our birds to be starving or, you know, be denied food. So it's, a, <laughs> there they are. It's a case of using the food in a certain way so that maybe you can have a tiny sprinkling of the dry seed, but maybe you're adding in some of the soaked seeds and sprouts and things like that, um, or using that um, dry seed in like foraging and things, and also using some of the tips in my How to Get Your Birds to Eat Vegetables video, uh, where you may be offering like veggie kebabs or leaves through the bars and things like that, so that there are other ways that you're providing veggies, because not every bird takes to chop straight away, and sometimes um, changing the way that we make chop, whether it's chunky or finely chopped or um, less kind of moist, you know, a drier chop. Um, a lot of birds like that. Sometimes they get converted onto certain vegetables to start off with. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of different experimentation, but don't kind of overdo it on the dry seed in the chop because it's a higher chance that these kind of pick and choose and that sort of thing. 
Should we say hello? Oh, absolutely not. Okay, I respect that. We'll say hello in a minute. <laughs> How dare I ask for a step up? I mean, shocking. Um, right. You know, Sammy, that's a good point, though, there, because um, some people would criticise that, that he just didn't step up when you asked him to there. But because um, I've obviously been studying this a lot, and I've had a lot of conflicting opinions, as people may know on Discord. But what happened there is kind of perfect in some ways. Chip is busy. Chip Jump said to... no. So he respected that. Yeah. Your bird step up should never be a command. It should be more of something they want to do. Something else they talk about today. Oh, sorry. Because <laughs> Sophie didn't offer him a treat. They were kind of thinking it for chips, so he'd rather stay there. But yeah, um, it's just something that when I watched it, I was like thinking someone would probably say that's rubbish. And I'll be like, that's not rubbish. That's respect. Yeah. I mean, people are going to criticize me anyway because it's the internet. But <laughs> should we show him a head speech? Oh, my goodness. That's fine. I'm going to respect that. So respecting when your bird says no is just as valuable as respecting when they say yes. And one of the things I wanted to talk about today that I kind of already mentioned with chip and fish, not that they, you know, we're struggling with them, but something that we recommend with all. The easiest. They are the easiest, yeah, by, by a mile, um, is when you're looking at the fundamentals of the basics with, you know, interacting with your birds to make sure that you're always reinforcing things you want to see more of. Quite often when we think of stepping up, we kind of train the behavior and then we just expect birds to do it. And that's not to say that you're a bad person if that's what you think, but it's very easy to fall into that trap because we're like, well, come on, step up. You know the step up. But would you ask your bird to spin and then not give them a treat? Because both are trained behaviors. So I'm not saying you have to treat every single time they step up because sometimes the actual reinforcement is coming towards you and coming to interact with you. You know, that can be reinforcing itself. However, it's always good periodically to reinforce stepping up because you want to see more of it. If you don't reinforce it, your bird is going to potentially be less likely to want to do it. Chip's telling me no, I think right now, because he's got <laughs> the foraging bowls and they've just come out and they're like, what's in here? We need to make sure we mop up all of this before we even think about coming to you for anything else. And I've only got hemp seed on me at the moment and millet is their favorite. So I have a less desirable treat that's playing into it as well. Um, you're going to get some millet. <laughs> So, yeah, there's lots of different factors. But actually, if your bird says no and, you know, gives you the maw or the beak rather than a bite, you know, saying, OK, that's fine. Oh, even Millet's not doing it. These no. bowls. What are, are you, what, what is wrong with this shadow? Is something scary here? You step up? Yeah. Good boy. You know, it's Millet there. I don't know what's going on with this, this area. I don't know. There's, there's like a new tea towel there. Who knows? Good you goodness, know, it's cockatiels for you sometimes. There. Thank you. We'll see. We'll see in a minute. What's this? Done that? Absolutely not. Um, so we'll do it in a moment when he's finished with the bowls. But um, yeah, basically, respect when your bird says no. Don't just expect them to do what you're asking uh, or force them to do what you're asking uh, unless it's like an emergency situation uh, and go from there because stepping up is a trained behavior. It is a trick and it is something that we are asking them to do rather than telling them to do. Um, because we are in a cooperative, partnership-based relationship rather than a dictatorship. And no, nobody likes that. Um, so, yeah, that's just one of the things that I wanted to talk about today. So if anyone's got any thoughts on that, let me know. Or if you have any other questions. I think we've got a few questions coming in. Um, once you've written that comment, have a little, little sip of my, my squash. Uh, so what is the wild last ones? That's what I dealt with. So Cindy asked, do you recommend any calcium supplements? My birds get bird, bistro, organic DIY seed mixed with pellets, sprouts, and nutri berries. You won't use cuttle bone or mineral blocks. <clears throat> Generally speaking, we don't really recommend cuttle bones much anymore. Um, we've seen some things that make us uh, steer clear of them. For example, they can get very sharp when they're bitten and also they can get quite dusty and, you know, that's not necessarily ideal. And also there's some uh, doubt onto the digestibility of a cuttlefish bone for an animal, for example, like a cockatiel who wouldn't naturally encounter that in the wild. So that's just some thoughts. Um, really, we shouldn't be offering a, a calcium supplement unless a bird has a calcium deficiency. Uh, and obviously there is, you know, the question of calcium and D3 needing to interact in order to actually absorb it. Um, so unless your bird is calcium deficient, I would be hesitant to offer any kind of supplements because, again, you could be over supplementing. Um, generally speaking, we're going to be getting a calcium from uh, like dark leafy greens and things like that. I do have a graphic on Instagram of like different uh, things that provide calcium for your bird. But obviously you can always have a little check on that if you want to see the graphic DM me or something, I can send it to you. Uh, but there are lots of foods that contain calcium and it's better to get from that raw natural whole food. 
Um, Stace just is crusted, uh, crushed eggshells. You can, um, as long as you prepare them correctly, because you don't want any raw egg on there, and they are literally ground to a pulp, like a um, more of a dust, I suppose, because. Then um, you might have the same issue as like. But then you might have the same issue, yeah, of the the castle bones. So I prefer for my birds to get it from things like dark leafy greens because they have lots of health benefits as well. Hello. Yeah, it's like awesome. in the bowl, I said, these were dry mix, but they only sort of get this combo during lives and cleanup. Yeah, they've got a little bit of uh, extra tasty snack, like a little bit of, um, we refer to it as like rubbish seed. I'm not going to say what we actually call it. Um, you know, the kind of like more treat seeds with safflower, a little bit of sunflower um, and some millet. And yeah, I know, and some canary seed and things like that. Um, would you like to say hello to everybody? Is that what you'd like? You would? Okay. <laughs> Say hello, it's the big boss man. Such a big man, aren't you? Such a big man. <gasps> yeah, you say thank you. What have you got on your nose? <laughs> He's saying hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming to the live stream. My name is Mr. Fish, and I have a lot to say that is more pleasing to the ear than Louis screaming. Have you noticed that Louis has been quiet for a while as well? <laughs> because he's just the other two. Yeah, right? he because Louis quite likes. Charlie, but he doesn't like Olive. When they're out, they can be a bit like, well, why are you getting all the snacks? And that's not to say he's not getting the snacks, but you know what they're like. He's just being a bit fussy. Yeah, he is. Um, one question is, Rishi asked about uh, Charlie training. I said, just use a short stick or maybe link the stick to something good before introducing it to the bird. Lemon Rice had a question. I have a with a Konya. We're curious if it's a social benefit to let them meet and interact with supervised play dates. Any thoughts on this idea and any tips? Yes, you could. There are some things to consider. So I would have both oh, birds personally, if, if this was something I was going to do, have both okay, bye. <laughs> have both birds disease tested because there are some things like PBFD and avian borne virus that you may not see, you know, just if they're carriers or anything like that, and they are very serious. Um, and obviously you wouldn't want one play date to put your bird in danger. So I would say disease testing for those things before you allow your bird to meet any other birds, just to keep everybody safe, because that is it's what we want. <laughs> um, but yeah, you could go for a play date. Obviously, you have to expect the worst, that they may not like each other, that they may want to have a scrap, um, have a first aid kit on hand, have plenty of communal activities that they can do, like foraging, have separate stands, separate resources as well. So that if they don't want to interact with each other, um, they can be apart, make sure that they're travel carrier trained. So, you know, if they want to just go and have some separate space, that's fine as well. Um, do you have any other thoughts on that? Um, I was really paying attention. Obviously. Oh, great. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, disease testing would be my, my biggest kind of like warning thing for that, just to make sure that any bird that your bird comes into contact with is also um, healthy and things like that. So, Rishi also asked, how do you know, this kind of relates to a previous question, how do you know that two conies are bothered enough to share a cage? You've got a great video on that, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I've got a couple of videos on this topic. <laughs> yeah, so I've got a video on how to bond two birds together. Um, but David has a video on how to know, <laughs> how to know if. Um, Birds can you, like you, come here. This lazy man. I'm not flying. <laughs> come here. It's a big boy fish. Yeah. Um, David has a great video on like how to get two birds to share a cage. Um, one of the main things is um obviously to have a cage big enough for them to be trialed with, but having those cage trials. So with you know our bonded birds, especially with like Olive and Charlie and Pickles and Scampi, who we kind of bonded up ourselves, um, we did like half an hour of being in the same cage together with food and water on one side and another food and water on the other side, so separate resources. And then we watched them for half an hour and saw how they reacted. And it was all very positive. There was no scrapping, nothing like that. If there is scrapping, maybe you want to do shorter trial periods um, and maybe do it when they are expecting a meal. So they're more likely to just kind of be away from each other and snacking instead of um, being interested in the other. But you have to do a lot of active bonding work in the first place before you can get to that point. Mm -hmm. Anything else for me? No, no. no? Lovely, cool. Um, yeah, any other questions, guys? Drop them um, in the chat. <laughs> just saw uh, Casing and Poria. How can anyone not like Olive? I know. Um, for some reason, some of the birds just what really... The, what, 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 I don't know what that big... Does it... We didn't do that. Who did that? Does, it, does anybody know why there's a big thumbs up on the screen just now? Maybe if I try liking something. Did somebody send oh. that to me? That was odd. That was... That was really odd. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> if, very odd things, like, guys, 
Guys, own up. Who who sent the big thumbs up? Because I have no, <laughs> no idea. So what I mean, basically, now that this, this, you, this live watching number is going to zoom up because YouTube's already somewhere. Does right? that mean that I'm YouTube approved? <laughs> Does that mean that you've got a like? <laughs> Just got a, a mysterious like. Um, how bizarre. Okay. I mean, we'll roll with it. It's yeah, fine. Cool. Do you like that? Does Chibi like that? Does Chibi? Okay. okay right, <laughs> They're just in a really. Everything's a bit weird today, so um, okay, fair enough. What was I even saying? It's a question if you'd like to yeah. answer. Sarah asks, Hi, how long after taking your bird home should you wait to bring it to a vet for initial health check? Vets new bird packages include microchips and DNA testing. Is that too stressful for a first visit? Thank you. I don't know if anybody heard that. You may have Did you to... hear that? I, I heard Did most of it. Yeah, so, it? It's fine. so we're talking about after you bring a bird home, how long should you leave it before going to the vet? Well, there's quite a lot of things going on here as well. Though, yeah, testing. so there is a, a lot of testing involved. However, say for example, you wanted your bird to be home for like a week or something, that might not be enough time. How long do you actually want to leave it before taking it to the vet? And also if you start building up your trust with your bird and then you take them to the vet and you lose loads of that trust, then you might be back to square one anyway. So it really depends on the individual bird and how flighty, how nervous, how anxious, how stressed they are, and whether it's worth just kind of doing it right at the start. Yeah, there's some petty pets in the background. Whether it's worth kind of doing it at the start and kind of get it over and done with, so to speak, um, rather than trying to build up and do loads of effort into bonding and taming and training and then take them to the vets and then all of that going in the toilet because it's obviously going to the vet is a very stressful experience. So in my opinion, as long as the bird isn't super anxious and stressed and freaked out, I'd probably just get it over and done with um, and just do everything at once rather than longing it out and then potentially damaging your bond later down the line. That's my opinion. It's not, <laughs> it's not fact. I mean, do you want to come here? Yeah, she wants it in the chair. But do you want to come here and have some pets and mush? Do, do you want some petty pets? I'll have it in the chair. No, no. Do we want some pets? Lemon's got another question as well. Yes, please. How would you approach a required, a required bathing session? Sometimes my tummy will get something on her. She only did catch up once, and I worry I'm breaking trust with a forced bath. Um, I, I would, don't think I'd do a forced bath. I, yeah, I wouldn't do a forced bath. I would maybe maybe tailor when you're having snacks and pop um, her away during that time. We typically don't have our meals when the birds are out because they probably would just come and land in it, you know, in, in the barbecue sauce or whatever it may be, and they'll be covered in it, and then they'll smell weird for ages and potentially be stained. I think it might be better, even though some birds like to kind of eat at the same time as us, maybe pop her back in the cage with, like, some foraging or something just while you're snacking, and then you can pop your plate or whatever it is away and then avoid it in the first place. Obviously, if she's landed in something really gross then maybe you would have to um or something that's unsafe but again in in our opinion it's a lot less stressful to eat when the birds are having kind of in cage time and in cage entertainment because then we can just get on with actually eating in peace and have like maybe five minutes of peace in the day it's, it's a little treat also can we just appreciate how adorable she is you're a soft man aren't you someone needs to i've got another theory someone needs to like the actual live stream like physically like it not like in the chat but like the this live isn't stream. this isn't fishing for likes by the way no i want to see i want someone does it i wonder if it will like make that thing appear maybe that's what it's for yeah so not like liking in the chat but the actual live stream as if you were liking one of my videos because I've never seen that happen. No, me neither. Like, I've never ever seen that. It so can't be the first. It can't be the first time that that's happened though, unless it was a delayed reaction to me liking one of the Maybe. generous, uh, generosity things in the chat. That, uh, yeah, that's really weird. It hasn't affected the viewing numbers, so it's obviously not from YouTube. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe somebody, somebody's doing a, a secret thumbs up for me. Who knows? Secret. <laughs> All the secrets. Um, Oh shit, but it's shame I can't put Chip on camera as well. He's really into his pets today. Look at these babies. Yeah, Chibi is a real, real tart, to be honest, when it comes to his petty pets. He's a real petty pets man. Fish is like looking at the screen, so he's a bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to. don't know want to. Still pet. Anyway, where were we with the rest of it? So yeah, Charlie, we're doing his bonding with the other Conyers. Do you want some more or not? No. Um, <laughs> Jump scare. Yeah. <laughs> um, with Olive, we're just working a bit more on 
like more of her recall. She's really loving her recall at the moment. She's so excited and zips around and stuff. Uh, her fitness is getting so much better, which is a real treat. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, Pickles and Scampy, they're really into their tours of the house still. They love being ferried about and kind of shown what's going on. They love playing in the bedroom, messing around, getting up to mischief. And they're also really obsessed with when we do washing and we hang up the washing. Pickles has to go, and Louis as well, they have to go and inspect it. They have to crawl all over it, probably poop on it as well. So the point of washing it was defeated anyway. Um, for some reason, they just really love like the, the era that we hang the laundry on. It's just the, the best kind of birdie play thing. So that's quite funny. Um, so uh, never write yeah. into the Mac camera feature. Is it? Like yeah. if I... I, know, I think it's actually on Zoom or something. You, if you like wave it, like it's waving. If I, I didn't thumbs up. I don't know. If anyone ever finds out, do that was know. tested it. No one's liked the actual life, so I can't. I don't know if that theory is correct. Well, so that's, that's a good question, sweet Mo. Mo oh, there's me. more to it. A bird that I work with has neophobia. How should I go about that? So, what does neophobia look like? Yeah, exactly. We are really big on deconstructing labels at the moment. Quite often we see birds are stubborn, they're dominant, they're angry, they're uh, neophobic, they're anxious, they're stressed. When we say like that, we want to see what the actual behaviour is deconstructed into. What are the different behaviour components you actually physically see? And if that is that they are fearful of new or unfamiliar objects, people, items, sounds, then yes, that could be considered neophobia. But we like to kind of deconstruct it into what can we actually physically see and measure from our birds rather than labelling them as X, Y and Z because it could be really hard to offer the right advice when we're using kind of blanket terms and labels. Well, it's not just that the label's fine. Come here. Come here. Label... Everybody wants to see David. There he is. Hi. <laughs> the label's only useful up to a point. So I, I, I kind of take a middle ground because I've heard the hard line on it, whereas labels are constructs, labels are bad, and you shouldn't yeah. use labels. But labels are useful because they're shorthand, and labels allow you an opportunity to work out if it actually is the problem. So let's take neophobia, for example. The components of neophobia may be um, fear of new objects, obviously, you know, that's the definition. It may be a fear of hands specifically. It may be a fear of different places in the house. It could be loads of different things, and it could be also the behavioural components of it, like um, hissing at certain things or backing away from certain things. But then when you take these little puzzle pieces of the construct, you start to put, you start to make the label. And if you have all those puzzle pieces, the label's valid, and it is that. If you um, only have a couple of them, then maybe it's something else that's causing it. Maybe it's just a specific fear of hands. And then what's even better about seeing it in this uh, light, which I find really helpful for the way I think about it, is when you start looking at individual pieces, you can start solving the individual pieces. And when you start taking pieces out of that big construct, then the construct no longer exists. And you, you don't have a neophobic bird or a hormonal bird because you're taking the individual components and deconstructing them. And also on top of that, you're solving problems. So the more problems you solve, the less likely you're going to have that label and then that you're going to have a happier bird. And I found that a much more helpful way of looking at the word constructs rather than saying it's a label, you shouldn't use it, yeah. and it's bad. You know, it's, it's just more useful to people that way. David, if you haven't catched up, catched up, that's not that's poor English. If you haven't caught up on his previous live stream or any other socials, um, he's currently studying a course in like applied behavior analysis and things like that, and just doing even more CPD for us being, you know, bird trainers and stuff. And um, there's been a lot of interesting uh, bits and bobs coming out of that course. But yeah, um, we obviously have to use labels when it comes to like YouTube videos and things. Otherwise, our videos, I mean, our videos barely come up on search terms anyway. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's we not go down, not going down, down that route. route but, um, I can talk about deleting all my shorts in a minute. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we do use labels for the convenience of people finding our content and then we can offer solutions. That's not really what you asked though. What I will say though is I do have a video on neophobia um, and desensitization is a huge part of that and actually getting your bird used to, um, you know, new things in a way that is not invoking fear or lack of choice. That's something you want to avoid. John. Nobody's here for me. Why are you guys not <laughs> Why are you guys on the I live stream? Over, Why don't but... you just come and join me and we can talk about uh, you deleting your shorts? Because shorts are something that are driving Yeah, a lot of, not long. just us, a lot of people are getting really, really disenchanted with shorts. And for various reasons, as you, for you guys and the viewers, it's all the same rubbish that's on TikTok, but worse quality. And, you know, you'll force them. For us as creators, 
we don't follow trends, so they don't give us anything. We're not doing any dance routines. We don't we? do dance routines Unless... apart from like um, <laughs> this is a good reason. Taser ads obsessed with certain <laughs> things like that. Um, so yeah, anyway, it's just not really very useful. And I deleted all my shorts basically on the advice from other people because they just fell up. I'm fell up with it. I don't want to support it anymore. And I want people to actually see my educational content so I can help people. I don't care if someone sees Chip doing a trick. I can do that on Instagram and people, thousands of people see it on YouTube, a few hundred. If we're lucky. It's so frustrating. <laughs> I, I really am frustrated with, well, we're both are at the moment with the way YouTube is going, you know. And our goal is more, is less about money and more about helping the maximum amount of people. We, we want to change the world. And it's, as a grand, uh, we probably won't achieve that, but we, we want to help as many people as possible. If we can help one bird, then that's, that's a job well done. Obviously, we need to pay the bills as well. So yeah, you, that's the other problem. We do actually need money. <laughs> YouTube, if money. you're listening, please share our videos to someone. But yeah, David's deleted all bar couple of I'll his shorts now. I've got a short channel because yeah. then it doesn't do any harm to me. Yeah, he has a short channel, but I I don't really enjoy uploading shorts. I don't, that's like two different audiences. And it's not really, <laughs> it's not really what I like doing. Anyway, it's a bit of a tangent. But um, if you're looking for shorts content, you're not really going to find it here. You better follow me on Instagram because I post reels and photos and stuff. I know Instagram's not for everybody, but I, I like it as a platform um, to see cute bird stuff and educate and things and chat to you guys. Because obviously YouTube doesn't have, that used to, like back in in the good old days, you could message creators and have a dialogue, but you can't do that on YouTube other than through comments now. So um, if you ever want to DM, you can do that on my Instagram. So... <clears throat> Questions. Uh, so Sweet Mode K elaborate. They are scared of new things like toys and try to puff up when I approach the cage. They let me be singing with me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do you want to leave it at the distance where they're, you know, just checking it out, but they don't really want it to come too close at that point and kind of go in there. And I just want to interject right now because Alice has been incredibly naughty. Um, thank you very, very much for your generosity. It's very kind of you. Everybody who's joined the Naughty Club today, all of you are super generous. Um, but yeah, very, very kind of you. Uh, we appreciate you. We're really glad that you're part of the community. Love the little emoji of um, <laughs> a little dancing kind of pair in the city um, like this. Maybe I should just imitate every single emoji. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for you. Wow, there's like 50 people here. <laughs> I've never had such a popular live show, I think. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us. We're just chatting all things birds. I should probably have a bird. I mean, if there's this many people, I should probably. Fish is just you just done a, done a poops, haven't you? Um, right, okay. <laughs> this is what I mean. All the all the training goes out of the window, but yes. Where were we? Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? But yes, thanks to everybody who's joined the Naughty Club. We call it Naughty because we're just really awkward about it. We don't expect it. But thank I've never you. asked for remedying resource aggression, such as biting and sprinkling food and bowls. Me and um, Gina kind of covered it. Yep. Cindy also asked, I only have one green sheet, the rest are by G's and one parrot let oh by G's up to you for this by G's and one parrot let I'm petrified of letting them all be out together so I let them out uh when the buggies are in the room how do you introduce them uh, it's very difficult to introduce multiple birds because you don't want any toes getting bitten you don't want any fights sometimes it's better to work like one-on-one -on -one with one bird from one group and one bird from the other sometimes it is better to just do separate outings because you really don't want um to have any accidents and also if it's just yourself supervising the outings there's only so many ways that you can intervene between different groups i would say see if you can work one-on-one -on -one with one bird from one group and one bird from the other and go from there or just stick to having separate outings just to know that it's going to be peace of mind that nobody's going to get hurt because obviously it's the last thing we want always have a first aid kit on hand for birdies just to make sure that everybody's okay um but that would be my my approach personally for that sort of things um <clears throat> yes. Uh, Ned, Ned does Ned, a lot of actually not just Ned, Ned, Julia, other people are sort of commenting about they find shorts annoying. Shorts are really annoying. <laughs> if if they've done it differently, I would I'd been alright with them. I was like okay with the idea at the start. Ish. But honestly, I think you know, that they just don't really have a place on YouTube. You've got Instagram, you've got TikTok for short form content. YouTube is for long form. <laughs> For education for longer entertainment, I just don't think it's the place for it. And I think it's um been very bad for a lot of channels, including us. <laughs> I don't think it's any other questions. So if you've got other topics, then... um yeah, I do have a video on building a first aid kit. I have two actually. So uh do check those out. It's always good to have regardless. What is going on with these naughty brothers? <laughs> um 
Ah, so that's something else I wanted to mention, just in case anybody else has, have, has any questions. Um, oh, somebody has a, a King Seth first here. Um, do you have any cocktails? Uh, do your cocktails enjoy yeah, the stew? Did it? Tiki on top, I'm yeah. not doing anything. I just want... <laughs> Does anybody know? What are you doing here? You Why is this the first live stream? It it's not like a new feature that we've been told about. How strange. And then like all of those people just left as well. Is this YouTube? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Hello? That's what Olive, Olive loves saying. Hello? <laughs> so cute. How bizarre. I'm going to have to look this up after the live stream and find out what on earth is going on. Do the cocktails like treat straws? No, but we use the straws in different ways. So the cocktails don't use the treat straws. I know some people's cocktails do use the treat straws, which is cool. What we do instead is we have like the little ramekins from like the goo desserts, like the little glass ones. Obviously, we have them out of the cage, not in the cage. Um, and we just chop up some paper straws, sprinkle some yummies in there, and then they have a supervised like on the floor foraging experience with the straws. But they don't typically use the straws in the way that the conyers do, where they kind of get out the treats kind of like a like a yogurt pouch type thing. <clears throat> um, cool, right, so the other thing I want to talk about, and again, check your questions in because we'll be here for maybe like another 10 minutes. Um, we've had loads of consultations. If you didn't know, we have our business, Best Behave Birds, where we offer bespoke and affordable consultations for people around the world. And we've had loads of consultations recently for crimson bellied conyers, like our Charlie and Kipling. And they're obviously very... <laughs> Today. They're obviously very challenging. Life. Fish is like, I want to show you how to. Do you want to come here, Fish? Do you want to come here? No, he mouth. doesn't. Crimson belly conyers are very, very challenging, and a lot of people don't realize it. And one of the things I wanted to bring up uh, what, what is actually right? It does show that you can't just trust one source of information. <laughs> Yeah, they have been out for a really long time. You can't just trust one <laughs> source of information yeah, yeah. for learning about anything to do with any animal, let alone parrots. Um, it's very easy to go to one source of information because then everything's all in one place. But you shouldn't just take one person's word for it. That, for example, crimson belly conyers are really quiet and they're really relaxed and chill and calm because most of them aren't. Um, most of them are exceptionally challenging. We joke that they're like mini cockatoos because they are very sensitive to change. They're very easily uh, stressed out. They're more prone to plucking. Before I carry on, I just want to say thank you very much, Klaus, uh, for your generosity. Thank you. Uh, and then we've got like the, the jumping... I'm not going to get up and do like jumping jacks, but <laughs> thank you very much for joining the Naughty Club. You guys are really, really kind. Thank you. Um, yeah, trusting one source of information. It's like that me and David keep bringing up. You know, as much as we love you guys coming to our channels, we always say, question us. Why are we saying this? What are there other people saying? Is there a general consensus that something is right? Is there new information coming out that maybe something that we've always done can be done better or done differently? And we talk about that a lot when it comes to diet uh, and that kind of cultural shift. But, um, yeah, if, if anybody, any influencer, any trainer, anybody says, you should only stick with us, uh, I'm the font of all knowledge, I have all the answers, that is, like, big, like, red flag, um, not to be trusted, because nobody has all the information, they didn't get all of their information from one source either, uh, neither did we, always learning, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting information from all sources and doing a critical evaluation of, is this accurate? Does this align with my values? Is this something I actually want to do with my birds? What does this actually mean? Um, and yeah, we see it all the time. All the information about crimson belly conyers online is like, they're so sweet and so gentle. And, you know, I mean, they are lovely, don't get me wrong. We do adore them, but they are, Charlie and Kipling, let's not lie, they are our most challenging birds to work with. Yeah, um, and I think the, the thing is, this isn't just us saying we've got anecdotal evidence of Charlie and Kipling. This is what other people at Crimson say. And yeah. the more we talk to other Crimson owners, the more we learn about Crimson, the more it is <coughs> kind of their species. You know, they, yeah. they are much more difficult than green sheep. And because they're marketed like green sheep... They're, like, like, they're nothing like green sheep. Yeah. Conyers. They're very different. Even their bite force is very different. And... Um, people shouldn't expect them to be the same just because they're in the same genus. They are very different species. Um, and yeah, we do con we do consult with a lot of crimson belly conyer owners and it's it's quite a common thing. So that's something to bear in mind. Gina, right, I need to like, it's actually letting me like your 
very oh i can love it as well amazing uh very very generous um donation thank you very much gina we appreciate you we are very very glad that you are in our community we love you um really glad that you are here today um yeah thank you very much any other questions because i was just rambling for i think gina me. responded but um I mean, Gina, it's not quite true. So um, Patty asked, do your cockatiels and conies get along? And Gina said they don't get the cockatiels and conies out together because the conies try to bully the cockatiels. No, that's not technically true. Not technically true. Because <laughs> there are some we doesn't wouldn't. bully the cockatiels until no. she's happy sitting near them. Olive, because, well, because. she Olive is more than happy to be out with the uh, cockatiels as long as they don't approach her. Um, Even then, it's, it's, it's only no. when she's next to the food bowl that she doesn't want them next to her. Otherwise, she's quite happy sitting near them. Yeah, well. Olive, Olive is quite happy to be out with the cockatiels. Scampi's okay to be out with the cockatiels but because he's always flying around he's like a little fighter jet just zipping around all day they're a bit like what is going on and they can get a bit funny about that um pickles can be out with cockatiels but again they she doesn't like them coming too close especially if she's cuddling with david and they come up she's like nope i'm having my daddy time at the moment um haven't tried <laughs> lou and kipling out with the cockatiels and i have no intention to because kipling is kipling uh louie would probably be okay yeah i can't imagine louie having a problem with them um, these... charlie would probably be okay as well but again it's not um it's not something that we feel like we need to do no. um olive will come out with the cocktail she does that some days anyway same with pickles it's not something we really feel like we need to do um but conyers are challenging and they can sometimes uh lash out if a bird invades their personal space and we obviously don't want any conya bites especially not crimson conyers um crimson belly conyers their bite force is significantly stronger than a green cheeks um, even though they look very similar, their beaks are very stocky and they know how to use them. So we definitely don't want anybody getting bitten by crimson belly conyers, let alone the cockatiels, because this would not be very good. Yeah, um, we don't recommend crimson belly conyers for anybody, to be perfectly honest. And that's not us, you know, sitting on a pedestal saying, oh, we've got them, but you can't have them. That's not our intention at all. We just want to warn people of what they're like. And yes, we put a lot of time and training and effort into working through some of the undesirable behaviours, but some of them are kind of like species traits. And obviously we are in an environment where we have a lot of birds. We haven't got as much space as we'd like to have. We have plenty of space, but not as much as we'd like. They're obviously not in aviaries. Um, just because Charlie and Kipling are both crimsons does not mean that they you know, want to be friends. Charlie wants to be friends with them. Kipling's not sure yet. Um, yeah, they're beautiful birds, and that's probably why people go for them. Um, but unfortunately, they are not the right species for 99.9 recurring percent of people. There's two, two, a question from Honey T. How to know if my conyer loves me? What's your best signs? I've kind of got videos on that, but uh, let do that, and I'll read out Stacey's blog. So I, I find it interesting what she's just said. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what, what is... What love. is love? <laughs> what is love? That's the existential question. <laughs> what does love mean? Like, does your bird want to spend time with you? Do they want to cuddle with you? Do they love you too much and they're hormonal? What, what does love mean? If you mean, are they, I don't really like the word tame, but are they tame? Do they want to participate in training with you? Um, do they want to be in your close proximity? Do they allow you into their personal space bubble? Those are things that I'd be looking for the bird loves you but david has videos on like how to tell if your conya loves you because again it's, well, it's how, clickable. i don't think i said love did i said like so like I don't really yeah love either. it's clickable so but he um, said something surprising to me because mm -hmm. obviously we haven't had one of these little feathers we've only interacted with them elsewhere so stacy i feel like we're about uh, kikes i love them but would not recommend one but there's so many cute videos of them people all want one yeah i mean kikes are one of the least rehomed parrot species because generally they cope better in an unnatural environment like a home um but they they're quite high energy they're quite mm -hmm. demanding they require well you know all parrots require a lot of um different things but you know they require a lot of social interaction and again if people have single birds and that's not to say that you're a bad person if you're a single bird that is not the case at all but if you are your bird's flock as a the people of the house that means you've got to be putting so much effort into uh, maintaining their social needs and that can be hard work for some people um and again you know some of these problems online come from people seeing TikToks and stuff of birds doing silly things, you know, kites just hopping around and stuff. And they think, oh, I'll just go and get one. And just the impulse, that's, that's not even the word, impulsiveness, that's a, that's a word, I can't speak today. The impulsiveness of, you know, seeing some cute videos and just going and getting a bird is obviously awful. Uh, but people do it, don't they? Um, they do. And Stacey said, this is again interesting, they can become suddenly bite out of nowhere. 
been on Facebook groups, a lot of uh, people have had it, and they buy hard. And Stacey, I think that part of that is because people see the cute videos and they think that they quite will just tolerate anything. And then they're not reading their quite body language. They don't know, you know, and that's not their fault necessarily. You know, you only know what you know. And then to them, they bite out of nowhere. And then I'm not going to go into the biting topic. There's always recently. a reason for a bite, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know, and yeah, they do bite hard. So they've got even stronger beaks. I'd, I'd say they're probably stronger than a crimson belly. If they really wanted there. to, because, you know, we went to a, an in-home consultation um, at the end of last year, and it was with a kayak. It's an absolutely lovely bird. Really, really, um, really nice bird. Um, but you can see the size of that beak in person, and they are, like, physically bigger than you know a conya for example um they're probably similar kind of like physical body size to a cockatiel i would say like in height wise from like oh, they're stockier, from aren't they? yeah they're stockier but from like toes to the top of the head not including the crest they're similar kind of proportions but they are a bit chunkier <laughs> um but yeah you know sometimes you need like real life experience and obviously taking it with a pinch of salt with how other people are treating their birds and what they understand. Do you remember that thing we did? We um, talked about that um, Korean channel. Oh yeah! Well, so if you um, if you go on our website, bestbehavedbirds.com, we have a little like in the media section, and we actually um, consulted for um, a family in South Korea, and it was on TV in South Korea, and they've uploaded that video on YouTube. Obviously, they only use like. I don't know. Maybe uh, two five minutes out of, out right, of like, two, two minutes out of it, like an hour. hour's worth of consult. But we did help these people. So if you want to go and see that, that's on our website, bestbehaviorsbirds.com, on the in the media section. That was that was fun. Uh, but we do love kayaks. Maybe one day again. But I don't know. I don't know how we're going to do it. Obviously. Not here <laughs> in our dream world, in our rescue. And I am actually going to wrap things up um, in just a moment because we've been going for like an hour. Yeah, Iris saw it. It was it was good fun. We, we actually thought it was like fake when they first emailed uh -huh. us. We were like, why are these why us? <laughs> um, but you know, Google is doing us some favors at the moment. We're actually we're ranking on Google. I don't I don't mean to brag, but Best Buy Birds is, is ranking on Google. And you know, if you guys go and click on our website, that's an easy free way to come and help us out because <laughs> Google likes that. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm gonna wrap things up in a minute. So any last minute questions, drop them in the chat. Otherwise, um, we will be going to make probably something undesirable for dinner. Yeah, there's, undesirable. There's no reinforcement for dinner. I'm well, not... it's, it's probably reinforcement that we, we, need, we need to eat. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not very tasty. It's not pizza, anyway. is it? You know, it's, it's going to be something like well. So we ha unfortunately have to go and, um, go and cook that in a moment. But yeah, um, I just want to say a massive thank you guys for being here today. It's always fun and chaotic and slightly stressful to do live streams. But it's really fun to actually talk to you guys um kind of live and speaking of talking to us live if that's something you are interested in to live chat david and i you know we always do a little plug for our patreon um or if you'd like to join youtube channel members you may have seen some of our channel members in the chat you get custom emojis and you get a little picture next to your name and it comes up in green to show that you are special um if you join either youtube channel members or our patreon um, you can have access to our Discord server, which is like a live chat forum um, where you can live chat to me and David and all of our members. It's a really nice safe space for you guys to come and ask for advice, share cute bird uh, photos and memes and just make kind of birdie friends. So uh, all the links are just everywhere in my Instagram bio or on my page and stuff. If you want to go and check that out, uh, you're more than welcome to. But yeah, thank you so much, guys, for joining today. Um, it's been really fun as always. And um I'm really glad that you guys came. There's no other questions, are there? Awesome. Super. I don't think there are. So uh, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of the day. Uh, take care, and I will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>